What's up everyone, my name is Alex Chung and here are 10 essentials that I can't live without. Just can't, just gotta have them. All right, so the first thing on the list is gonna be the camera and lens combo. I am currently rocking the Canon C70 with the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8. The Canon C70, uh, it's a solid camera body with tons of features that are suitable for running gun stuff like weddings and, and live events that I shoot regularly along with commercial and also social media stuff. It's got built-in ND filters, which are great for on the fly shooting. It's got good 4K recording formats, got decent slow-mo. It can shoot raw if I need to, but I never do because um, it's kind of overkill for the stuff that I'm doing. And then the lens is Sigma 24 to 70. 24 to 70 lens is just an all around great range of focal lengths, right? You got the 24, which is pretty wide. And then you got the 70 millimeter, which is decently telephoto-ish enough. Uh, for the things that I shoot. And then also with the lens and camera, I also have this Canon speed booster thing. It's a focal reducer that gets you that full frame field of view on the Canon C70 because it's a super 35 sensor. I can't say enough good things about the Canon C70 because it's just, it just works, you know? Great camera for documentary type of work uh, or running gun style type of work. All right, number two, the Smart Rig Free Blazer Tripod. Now a tripod is one of the most quintessential things that you can have in your filmmaking kit. It's something that I use regularly. Most of the time it's really to build my rig from the tripod. So I would attach the camera to the tripod and then I would rig everything up from there because it's such a steady and stable uh, base to be working with. Now the free blazer tripod is amazing. It's got, there's a one lock for every stage of the leg. So you can raise it up super fast. You can lower it really fast because it's only one latch on each leg. You don't have to go on each leg and do it twice uh, and, and mess with the levers and stuff like that. It's also made of carbon fiber, which makes it really light. But one of my favorite features is that on the tripod head itself, you can switch between the Manfrotto standard base plate or the DJI RS3 base plate, which is really nice because I use the gimbal all the time and I have that base plate on my Canon C70 all the time. So it reduces that step of like, oh, I have to take off the base plate and then switch it on uh, to a Manfrotto one and then I can mount it on a tripod. With this, I can just keep the DJI plate on the camera and then just like put it on the tripod and then we're good to go or we can start shooting. Speaking of the RS3 Pro, this is it. This is the gimbal that I use for pretty much all of my shoots. I definitely am a gimbal guy. Like I, I don't like using handheld. A handheld is great, it's fine, but I, that's not the preferred way of shooting for me. I don't like the handheld look. It's, it's a little too shaky. I guess my handheld is way too shaky, so I'm not a huge fan of it. And I would much rather prefer to shoot my footage on a gimbal because of how steady you can get the shots to look and how fluid and I, li I like movement. I like making my shots look dynamic because a lot of times you're shooting a lot of like live events and stuff like that and having that movement for me, that works really well. I've created a kit for the RS3 Pro. These got two handles right here. Uh, I've got the sling handle in the back and then I've got just a couple more things here and there. Um, but overall, it's a very light setup and the Canon C70 would just sit on top like that. All right, the next thing that we have is the Pelican case. This is the 1510 version of the case. Um, it's a case for all my equipment. The camera stuff goes in here, lenses go in here, batteries, wires, cables, whatever, except snacks. Snacks are a huge part of uh, documentary shooting and writing, wedding shoots because you get hungry a lot. So. Snacks are in here as well. As you can see, got it all stickered out. These are stickers that I've collected in the past. At first it was just like random stickers I would put, like brands. I would just put like brands on here. Recently I've been starting to collect uh, stickers that we've gotten from uh, trips that we've taken. Um, and so you can see here, this is from uh, Yellowstone. So this is uh, two years ago when we went to Yellowstone. We would go to the visitor center and just like buy some stickers, whatever we, we could find in there. And then I would just put it onto the Pelican case. So the goal is to cover the entire front side, which is starting to get filled up. Um, I've still got tons of empty space here. And here I've got some other stickers, uh, like this one uh, is from Mammoth. Uh, this is like another California sticker uh, that I have. So why don't we just like maybe put a sticker onto the Pelican case. Let's put the California one. I think this is gonna be good. Bam. I wanna put this down really quick. Wow. All right, here we go. So that's gonna go in there and 
Bam, it's on. California sticker on there. All right, number five. This is the equipment car. This thing is a game changer for us. I wish we bought this way sooner than we had. This is the on-stage UTC 2200 utility car. We load all of our gear onto this. We've accumulated quite a bunch of gear. We have boxes of like camera stuff, Pelican cases, C stands that we put onto this equipment cart. And having, just having things on wheels is so much better and putting everything on here all at once saves us from going back and forth, back and forth uh, between the car and the loading place. This thing folds down super quick, super small actually, so that when you throw it into the trunk of your car, it doesn't take up a lot of space, which is great, but it can also be extended up to seven feet long. And usually that's how we would use it, pulling it out all the way uh, to seven feet and then loading all of our boxes and all of our cases on top and then just loading it to the loading zone or the place that we can set up. All right, number six, the DJI wireless mics. These things are so clutch. Uh, they're small, they have internal storage in them, so you can record without having to insert a SD card uh, in there. And these things are super quick to hook up onto someone who is speaking for weddings um, or just for content creation. Uh, because this wireless receiver plugs straight into your phone, just like this, and you can record straight onto your phone. It makes content creation, shooting like TikToks or Reels, really, really fast and really, really simple. And recently we've needed a couple more of these mics. The one that I bought only came with one. And right around that time when I was looking to buy, they had uh, the version two come out. So these are the DJI Mic 2s. Uh, which are great. They come with two mics and then one receiver, and obviously I'm using one right now. Um, but yeah, it comes with this charging case, which is amazing, it looks so cool. Uh, one of the main features uh, that I love is the 32-bit flow, which is basically like raw recording, but for audio. So you don't have to worry about clipping at all if you have the 32-bit option uh, enabled. And I love the design features of the mic itself. It's got this transparent front, so you can kind of see through the, the mic, which is kind of awesome. Uh, it's got that magnet on the back here or the clip where you can clip it onto someone's shirt, uh, which is really fast for things like weddings. You would just walk up to someone who's speaking and then just clip it right onto them. And then one of the cool things, one of my favorite things that uh, they've done is for the windscreen, uh, you can directly plug it into the 3.5 millimeter jack now. So you would just go like this, plug it in, and then it's on there versus on the Gen 1, you would have to do that twisting thing where you would uh, line it up with the little thing on top, the little port on top, line it up and then twist it on, which took a while to do, um, which was kind of annoying, but this is just so much faster. And this is the little case that it comes in, super nice. I just throw it into my Pelican case and then call it a day. All right, number seven, Cobor lights. These are the lights that I use. I'm an ambassador for them, but uh, they are genuinely really, really good lights. Lighting is super important because of, you know, obviously for camera stuff, for filmmaking, lighting is really important. And so having powerful lights uh, really helps with what you're shooting um, and you can do a lot more with more powerful lights. And they've got a whole bunch of different options from RGB to bicolor to just single daylight or tungsten uh, color lights. They've got all the standard features uh, like everyone else does. But one of the things that I really liked about the Cobra lights is the included NATO rail uh, attachment that you can have on the light itself. So this thing is really cool. You can attach NATO accessories onto the side of the light with this NATO bar. And as you can see here, you can attach three eighths or quarter inch screws on here. You can actually attach NATO rail accessories onto the side of the light as well. So things like a V-mount battery, you can actually attach like a V-mount adapter and then attach your V-mount battery on the side of the light and then plug straight into the back of the light. You can also attach multiple lights side by side together. So there's two uh, NATO rails and then you can make like a mega light or something, so. And at the time of making this video, the current strongest light that they have right now is a 300 watt light, but in the future, I'm sure they're gonna make a 600 watt and even a 1K watt uh, in the future. So definitely excited for what they come out with next. All right, number eight, the laptop slash computer. You can't talk about filmmaking cameras and all that kind of stuff, shooting footage without talking about the editing and the machine that edits the footage. So this is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip inside. Um, and this thing is not my main 
driver. This is, <laughs> I use this one mainly for editing on the go when I'm traveling, but uh, when I'm at home, I'm a desktop guy. I grew up building computers with my dad. My dad taught me everything that I know about building desktops from scratch. And so uh, naturally I've carried the tradition uh, till this very day. And so I built my own desktop out from scratch. So for my desktop, I've got the Intel i9-12900K processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 360 Ti, and two terabytes of NVMe SSD storage for editing. I love desktops because they're way more powerful for editing than a laptop ever could. So uh, for this desktop, I specifically built it to handle the Canon C70 footage, more specifically HEVC or H.265 footage. The Intel CPU has a hidden power, hidden feature called the Intel Quick Sync, which is really good at decoding H.265 footage. Basically, without getting too technical about things, uh, imagine that this is your video file right here, this clean, nice piece of paper. Um, and what H.265 does is it will crumple this piece of paper into a very small file so that you can record more onto your SD card. But because it's so crumpled, it takes a lot of processing power to do this. And taking it apart uh, requires a lot of processing power for your CPU, uh, which if you don't have a good CPU, it will take a while for it to carefully decompress this file without ripping the paper uh, in any way, shape or form. So having that Intel Quick Sync feature is really, really helpful for decoding H.265 or HEVC footage. All right, next thing on the list is the smartphone. Uh, one of the most underrated things I think about filmmaking nowadays is the inclusion of the smartphone. This phone can control my camera, my gimbal. It can shoot really high quality footage. So let's go over some of the things that are on my phone. So if we go into my filmmaking folder on my phone, the first thing that you see here is the DJI Fly app, which controls the drone. You can fly with it if you connect it to the a little RC remote control thing. The next two apps are just lighting apps. These are uh, to control the Godox lights and the Cobor lights that I have. The Godox light I usually use just mainly for uh, weddings. And then the Cobor lights I use for everything else. And on those apps, you just control the intensity, the color and the tint of those lights. And it makes it a lot easier to just control the light without having to go over to the light and you know, dial the knobs and stuff like that. The next one is Rode Central. This is for the Rode wireless mics that I had uh, before I got the DJI ones. And you can control a bunch of different things on that app as well. The DJI Ronin is the next one. You can actually control the gimbal from the app itself. Uh, and you can do a whole bunch of things like adjust settings and calibrate the gimbal. The next one, Lightroom, is really straightforward. It's just for editing photos and stuff like that. So not really filmmaking, but uh, I'm just gonna throw it in there anyways. Blackmagic Cam is the next app that I have. It basically makes your phone like a camera uh, and you can adjust shutter speed, ISO, uh, you can shoot log on there, 4K, and it's got a whole bunch of other features like false colors and, and zebras and peaking, I think, on there as well. Next one, Sunseeker. Uh, this one is great for scouting uh, and making sure where the sun is uh, at a certain time or a certain day. It's a great way to plan your shoot and schedule your shoot around where the sun is gonna be. Next one is the Canon Camera Connect. This app allows me to control my mirrorless camera. And it's great for me to shoot thumbnail pictures because a lot of times I'm shooting by myself. So then I don't have to go over to the camera and hit the shutter button. I can just do it on my phone. So these are the filmmaking apps that I have on my phone. There's a whole bunch more other apps that uh, a lot of people have recommended in the past that um, I'm probably gonna use sometime in the future. All right, the last thing that we have here, number 10, this is the wireless director's monitor setup that I have. Um, this thing is for my wife, who is the director for all of our commercial stuff. Um, and she holds this little setup whenever we're shooting because it's much easier for her to look at this monitor than to hover over my shoulder and look through the camera, little viewfinder thing. Um, it's a lot easier for everybody, honestly. The transmitter right here is the Hollyland Mars 300. This is a very, very early demo unit that I got so long ago. And the monitor that I'm using is the Atomos Ninja 5 recorder. Uh, it doubles as a recorder. It will record ProRes or DNX HR and it shoots on an SSD drive, which is amazing. And this is also really helpful for shooting YouTube videos where I can just kind of look at the screen and set up my frame uh, and get an idea of like what it looks like. But yeah, this thing is great. Um, really small, really compact, and you can carry it around anywhere. All right, so those are the 10 things that I can't live without. Let me know down in the comments below what you would add or change to this list. 
Until the next one, my name is Alex Chung, and uh, yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs>